On July 30, 1971, Apollo 15 touched down on the lunar surface. Okay, Houston, as I stand out here in the wonders of the unknown at Hadley, I sort of realize there's a fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. The first of the Apollo J missions. Apollo 15 was going to stay longer on the moon than any previous Apollo mission before, with a desire to efficiently explore more of the lunar surface using the LRV, or Lunar Roving Vehicle. This was a year and a half long program from initial concept to delivery to the Kennedy Space Center. And it all had to come together in terms of uh, the ability of the astronauts to see if they're gonna be able to drive it on the moon, as well as practicing deploying it. The idea of taking a car to the moon had been considered by NASA since the dawn of the Apollo program. The problem had always been making a Jeep-sized vehicle that could somehow fit into a small compartment on the side of the lunar module. It wasn't until May of 1969 that a cost-effective folding design was agreed upon. NASA gave Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama the go-ahead to oversee the development of the LRV, with Boeing and General Motors being jointly awarded the $19 million contract. While the new design for the LRV won over NASA, it presented multiple challenges to get from design to reality. I didn't have much of a capability to design a car that weighed as much as your car that you drive, for instance. In fact, the car could not weigh more than 480 pounds on Earth. The biggest design problem we had was the wheels. The wheels had to go into potholes that were one foot deep and two feet in diameter and go over a rock that was a foot high. It was decided early on that rubber was not a viable material for the wheels because of the extreme temperature differentials on the moon. So the engineers went to work on finding the right material and design concept, with a group of engineers discovering the right solution on a vacation to Mexico City. They noticed these young girls basket weaving, and light bulb came on and says, hey, if we could do something that, like that with wire, we might be able to have a lightweight car. And when we came up with it, and they weighed it, it weighed only 17 pounds, so that made the whole vehicle possible. As the LRV was being constructed, astronauts were hard at work learning how to drive the vehicle in simulators, helping inform design with their feedback. Our simulator out at the Marshall Space Flight Center was a six degree of freedom, movable based simulator that when the astronauts got seated in their seat, they were looking at a three foot diameter TV screen uh, of the moon. They would give feedback to us that they'd like to have more control authority. And so we'd incorporate a, an Ackerman steering a system where the front wheels would turn to the right, the back wheels would turn to the left, and they could do a 10-foot circle. The control for it is all built into this, this one stick right here. It has the brake. The brake is the, the rearward position of this stick. Brakes release now. To go forward, you merely push the, the stick. After 17 months of development, the lunar roving vehicle was ready to launch on board Apollo 15. Apollo 15 sought to be a deeper scientific study of the moon, with hopes of learning even more about the moon's origins. This included the collection of samples on the lunar surface, as well as photographic observations made by Command Module Pilot Al Warden in lunar orbit. With these experiments, we hope to be able to map the surface of the moon, correlating that with the rocks that we get from the surface of uh, Hadley Grill and with some of the rocks that we've had uh, on previous flights. While on the lunar surface, the addition of the LRV allowed Commander Dave Scott and Lunar Module Pilot Jim Irwin to better explore the moon, being able to venture further away from their landing site in search of soil samples. As well, Scott and Irwin made sure to put the LRV through its paces. This is really a rock and roll ride, isn't it? Never been on a ride like this before. Oh boy. I'm glad they got this great suspension system on this thing. They fully enjoyed it, too, you could tell, because they did a few things that they weren't supposed to do with it. While on their second extravehicular activity, Scott and Irwin were able to drive the LRV out to Spur Crater, where they discovered a unique sample. Guess what we just found? I think we found what we came for. Crystal rock, huh? Yes, sir. The rock came to be known as the Genesis Rock. Formed in the early stages of the solar system, it is more than four billion years old. While it was once thought to be part of the moon's primordial crust, it was actually formed after the moon's crust had solidified. 
Even so, the Genesis rock was, and still is, a fascinating lunar discovery that has allowed scientists on Earth to learn even more about the moon's history. We feel if we can learn the history of the moon, we can extrapolate it to the history of the Earth, and perhaps, uh, with this knowledge, discover the manner in which our resources were created, and, and uh, the manner in which we can discover new resources and preserve what we have. While the LRV that was driven by Scott and Irwin had to be left on the lunar surface, NASA had built three more rovers to be used on the subsequent Apollo missions. While Apollo 18 was eventually canceled, Apollo 16 and 17 both utilized lunar roving vehicles to cover even more ground on the moon. Apollo 16 commander John Young even gave the LRV a high-speed workout in the Lunar Grand Prix. Man, I'll tell you, Andy's never seen a driver like this. The legacy of the lunar roving vehicle can still be seen on display at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where a vibration test unit is on display. As well, the Rocket Center worked with Polaris in 2019 to build a working lunar rover replica for the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. The Polaris folks have created a tremendous uh, replica of the lunar rover that we designed back in the late 60s and the early 70s and flew to the moon. This is so neat that we reached out and then they reached back to us to go build a lunar rover 1G capability, something that we could use in parades and just showcase of what we did back in the late 60s and early 70s. The replica is now on display right next to the vibration test unit at the Rocket Center, reminding people of the role that the lunar roving vehicle played in helping the Apollo astronauts further explore the moon. We could not have done the mission. We couldn't have gone one step without the support of the many, many thousands of people involved. Thank you very much.